Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to upgrade your modded or rooted Nexus 6P from the first Android O or 8.1 developer preview to the second developer preview released just earlier today. So today we're going to be using Fastboot to do this so you will need a computer and you would have need to already have your drivers installed and configured on your computer and we'll get started right away. So currently I'm just rooted using Magisk but I'm sure if you have any other mods flashed on it before then you also want to download those as well. And make sure they work with the second developer preview. So first up we'll need the SDK platform tools which just uh, has the fastboot and ADB files that we need to use, mainly just fastboot. So we're going to need to download the one for your specific operating system here. So for example Windows and then you have to agree to the terms and conditions and click the download button, the blue one. Next up is the latest Android 8.1 factory image. Now this is just the download page and we'll download the one for the 6P same as the page before, check and agree and then download it using the blue button and last but not least make sure you have the latest version of Magisk or Magisk Beta if you want and just download the zip file here and install that so just the latest Magisk so once you have those three or more files downloaded depending on what kind of other things you have on your device you'll have at least these three and what you need to do is we're going to open up the Platform Tools folder, a zip file, and open up the Platform Tools folder, and we're going to extract the Fastboot and libwinpthread-1dll. Just these two, since we are only going to be using Fastboot. We can close that now. Next up, we'll open up the Angular Factory image for the Android 8.1 beta, or Developer Preview 2. We're going to open this up. I don't think, I think the radio needs upgrading, but we're just going to extract both the bootloader and radio images, just in case. And then next up we're going to open the image zip file. Once that's open, extract the boot system and vendor images outside just like that. And once you've done this, all you need to do is close everything. And then we'll get on with the flashing process. So let's go back to our device here and we'll need to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So to do that, with your phone plugged in at the bottom, uh, all you need to do is hold the power button and then tap on restart and pretty much just hold volume down. This will reboot your phone into the bootloader as soon as it turns back on so you don't have to time it right or anything like that. Just keep holding volume down until your phone boots into the bootloader, like so. Once it's in the bootloader, we're just going to leave it on the screen and we can see the bootloader is 0375 and then the let's see the baseband is 0385 so we'll need to update the bootloader at least due to this or our phone currently having an older version you can probably skip it but I might as well show you how to do that anyways so make sure your phone is plugged in and what we need to do is open up a new command window a PowerShell window or a terminal window depending on which operating system you're using in the same directory as our fastboot executable so what we need to do is hold shift and right click in an empty space this is only for windows and open up either a command window here a powershell window here but i'm going to open up this terminal emulator so just so i can show you guys better so first up we're going to upgrade the bootloader so to do this we'll first check that our device is connected properly and we'll type in fastboot devices there we are our serial number appears here so we know that it is connected properly Next up, we're going to flash the bootloader image. So I'm going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space in the end and drag in the bootloader image. Hit enter. Now next up, we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So it kind of uses a new bootloader here. So we can change this menu down to reboot bootloader using the volume buttons. It'll start on start and if you press volume down once, it'll go to reboot bootloader and then press the power button to select and our phone should reboot back into the bootloader. Once it's back in, we can check that our device is connected again by typing in fastboot devices. And once that's confirmed, we can now go ahead and flash the regular things. So, so we're going to type in fastboot flash boot, leave a space in the end here, and drag in the boot image. Alternatively, you could actually just start typing in boot.img instead and use tab to autofill the things in. So we'll have a go at that next with the system image. So we'll type in fastboot flash system. And then you can type in, start to type in system, press tab, and your command prompt will try to fill in the most appropriate file that it can find within the same directory. 
you can enter like that. Okay, now once that's done, we can go and flash the vendor image. So we type in fastboot flash vendor. Start typing a vendor image and hit enter. Same as what we did with the system image. Or you could still drag it in, depending on how your environment is set up. And okay, we're done now. So we're going to reboot back into TWRP, where we will flash the latest version of Magisk. So we're going to go back on our phone here, and then use the volume buttons to change to recovery mode. Press the power button to select it. Now I did forget to mention that you probably wanted to copy over the Magisk zip file if you don't have it already on your phone. Otherwise you can sideload it using ADB, and you will have to extract that because we didn't do that. But luckily, um, you can actually access the internal storage through the MTP protocol here when you're in TWRP. So you can just go to this PC and copy it like you would normally. Or you could end up side loading it, but uh, I already have it on my phone. So what you need to do is swipe to allow modifications, although that is actually optional as well. And then scroll down to find the Magisk zip file and swipe to flash that. Now once that's done, we can tap on reboot. And of course, after you've flashed anything else that you need to flash, we will tap on reboot system and wait for our phone to turn up. Okay, so our phone is just booting up here. We can tap on OK that we're in the beta program. Let's take a look at Magisk. If you don't see Magisk Manager here, it might pop up a little bit later. But if not, you can always try installing the APK. But there it is. And we should be rooted just fine. There we are. Okay, so there's a new version of Magisk Manager, but that's alright. Let's uh, check our safety net status. You can see our CTS profile is false. And this is actually something to do with, I believe, the second developer preview. I was reading about this on the Magisk forum. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it passes at this moment. I think Google will probably have to fix something like this, or we can see if Magisk is able to do it. So keep an eye out for a Magisk update, and I'll also keep you guys posted in the more info down below if things do change. But this has happened on someone's Nexus 5X as well, on the second developer preview. The CTS profile would not pass. So that's how you at least get root access on your phone. You may not pass safety net at this point, but it might in the future. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down below. Try my best to answer them. And of course, you can find me on various social media outlets, I guess. Links to those are in the more info. So thanks for watching, guys. And as always, happy flashing.